G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.NET 2013 tutorial and we're revisiting parameters in a big way. So this is actually the second part of my parameters video. The first one you'll find in the eighth video, which I'll put a link for down in the description, known as subs, functions and parameters. However, this time I'm going to reintroduce a couple of concepts and we're going to make things a little bit more complicated this time around. We're going to look at what the difference is between bival and by ref, which you may have seen before. We're going to have a look at optional parameters. And then finally, how do you pass arrays back through parameters? So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start with just a basic console application. So I'm going to click console. I'm not going to name it because it's going to be a throwaway application. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on taking the average of a set of numbers. Now to start with, we're literally just going to take two numbers and we're going to average them out. So to begin with, let's just put some code down that's going to do exactly like. So first thing we need to do, we're going to take two numbers from the user, calculate the average, and then display it to them. So let's do exactly that. Let's go console.write, please enter a number, and then do our good old read line. Now, I'm not going to use integers, I was about to, but we're going to use singles this time around. And that way we can have fractions in there as well, just because. All right, so that's going to get us one number. Please enter a number and then read it from the console. Then I'm going to take a second number. Please enter another number. Change it to two. And that's our first step done. Second thing, let's display, let's get the average. So dim average as single. Equals. So how do we calculate an average? Well, you add up all of your numbers. So number one plus number two, and you divide it by how many numbers you have. Now, quickly, if you think about order of operation, division always occurs before addition. So what's going to happen is we're going to get second number divided by two, and then it's going to add the first number on. So to fix that, we're going to have to put brackets around this bad boy here. And that's going to calculate the average for us. Now we should print it. Whoop, what the heck was that? The average is average. Like so, and let's give them a read line so they can read the screen. And that should be right. Get two numbers, calculate the average, display. Nothing we haven't done before. Sorry if this is boring you. Five, six, average is 5.5. .5. Perfect. All right. Next step is, let's move this guy into a subroutine. So I'm going to cut this code. I'm going to make a sub, and I'm going to call it sub calculate average. Pop the code there. Now to make sure this code actually occurs, I'm going to call on him. And let's go from there. Let's test it again, just make sure he still works. Five, six, perfect. All right. So the next thing we should probably do is convert this so we can send it to numbers. So let's start utilizing some parameters now, guys. Because what we've got right now is we've got all this code occurring in Calculate Average, and realistically, a sub should have ever do what its name suggests. So it names suggest that it only calculates the average of something. So why is it asking for two numbers, calculating the average, and displaying it to the screen? Well, that's just the wrong way to go about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to steal this chunk of code here and we're going to put him back inside submain and we're going to turn them into parameters. Cut and paste. Now you'll see that num1 and num2 we get errors for because they're not declared, they're inaccessible at this point. So let's quickly go over what that means. We can dim num1 down here in submain and it will not exist over here in sub calculate average. And no, I'm not about to put these dims up the top of the module, like some people might want to, because that's actually bad practice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up these parameters here, and I'm going to call them the same thing. We're going to call them num1 and num2. All right. And you'll see the errors go away, because now num1 exists here, and num2 exists just here. However, we can narrow down here. It's because we're not passing it any parameters. No argument specified for parameter num1, sorry, num2 and num1 as well, but it's bitching about num2 apparently. So what I'm going to do there is just type in num1. You can see down here I'm passing it there, and num2. Now here's probably the confusing part. Don't confuse this guy with this guy. When, a param when you collect a variable and pass it to a parameter, 
They're actually two separate things. So this guy here and this guy here are actually two different things. If we were to change the value of num1 here, if I was just to go num1 equals 50 for whatever reason, it would not affect this original guy. He would still equal 5 or whatever else got typed in originally. That's just something to note there. And before we finish and test this, I'm going to steal this read line, pop in below calculate average, and let's try it out. Let's press play. 5, 6, still works exactly the same way. The next thing we should really do is move this guy from a sub into a function. Because really he's calculating an average, we want him to return the number 5.5 and let us do whatever we want with it. Maybe we want to use it in another calculation. Maybe we want to use it in to calculate another average for whatever reason. Okay. So what we're going to do is change this guy to a function. And instead of dimming average as single, I'm literally going to get rid of all of this line, including the equals, and type in return. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this value and return our number 5.5 back down here to submain. So I need to steal this line of code and we're going to return our dim average just here. And then print it to the screen. Now this might not look like much. It might look very silly that I originally moved it all over, but I just wanted to show you step by step why I'm introducing parameters and why I'm introducing a function and a return. So it's going to calculate the average for us and return the value back down to submain. And that value is going to get plugged inside of average and we can keep using it just like we did before. Five, six, done. Perfect. So that there is a reintroduction into parameters, why we actually use the things. All right. So what if we wanted to be able to average three numbers, but not every single time. Maybe we want to average two numbers sometimes and three numbers some other times. As soon as we mentioned, you know, it's an optional parameter, isn't it? So what we do is we set it up as optional just there. Type in optional. Optional parameters must occur at the end of all your parameters if some of them aren't optional. So for example, these are compulsory parameters because I haven't got the optional keyword in front of them. So they appear first and the more optional one appears last. So I'm going to say num3 is optional, and you'll notice I just got an error up here. Optional parameters must specify a default value. That's because if we don't pass a value down here, then Visual Basic needs to know what value to give num3 instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, right, if they don't pass it a value, I'm going to set it as minus 1. And if they haven't given me a number for, minus, for number 3, it's going to be minus 1, and we're not going to include it. In our averaging calculation. All right. So, for example, we're going to have to if statement this. If num3 does not equal minus 1, then they've obviously given us a number for num3. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to return the average of number 1, 2, and 3. So, num1 plus num2 plus num3 divided by 3 this time. All right. I'm going to add an else to this statement and I'm going to put our original guy up there. All right, so what the hell am I doing? If they've specified a number for number three, it's not, well, hopefully it's not going to equal minus one. Okay? If number three does not equal minus one, then return the average of three numbers. Otherwise, return the average of just the first two numbers. Okay, so this code will still work down here. If I press play, it should still do the average of two numbers and give me 5.5. If I quickly add a third number to this, Let's go four, five, and six. And you can see it's accepted three numbers. The average of four, five, and six is five. So that's it there. If you want time to catch up, pause the video now because we're going to move on and we're going to have a look at something a little bit more important than this. Okay. That's an optional parameters done and dusted. However, let's say for whatever reason, we don't want to just calculate the average. We want to calculate the average and the total of the numbers. All right, so I've just changed the name of that function, so I'm going to have to update it down here. Now, why would you do this? You probably wouldn't. You probably have two different functions for an average and a total, but I'm using this example just to show you how it works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another parameter up here, which is optional again, where we can take the total 
back with us too. So we're calculating the total here, and then we're dividing it straight away by three to calculate the average of those numbers. But let's say we actually wanted to get the total back down into sub-main. So let's add in a fourth optional parameter called total as a single. I'm going to make him equal zero, not minus one this time. Now you can see it's starting to stretch across the screen and it's getting really, really messy in my eyes. What's a really common technique is you put each parameter on its own line. So what you do there, just click next to num2, press enter, and it auto Visual Basic automatically lines them up, which I absolutely love. Well done, Microsoft, for that one. Okay, so I've got my optional total parameter in there, and the idea will be I'm returning the average, and I'm going to return the total inside this parameter. All right. If anybody knows about by ref and by val, you could probably skip this part, and this is what I'm getting at. All right, first of all, let's start utilizing this total guy. Let's bring him into the play. Okay, just here. Whoops, sorry, not here, here. I'm going to calculate the total. All right, so you can see I'm repeating code there. So instead of calculating the total next to return, I'm just going to put total. All right. Let's do the same for here. Total equals num1 plus num2. Replace this guy here. Now let's test our code. Make sure it still works. So 4, 5, and 6. Perfect. Still calculates the total exactly. And the average, I should say. But what if I want to get the total back down here? So what we're going to do is we're going to declare another variable called total. So we're going to set it to 0 initially and then pass it to this guy, and hopefully, when he comes back, we should have a total value. So the average is average, and the total is total. All right, so what the idea would be is total gets passed inside calculate average total, whoop, right up here. Calculate the total, and that should be setting the value here. All right, so let's start it and try it out. Four, five, six. And you'll notice, we've got a bit of an issue. The average is 5, and the total is 0. Realistically, 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 15. So the total should be 15. Now, the average works. So you know that this bit's working perfectly fine. But total is set to 0. So what's actually happening is it still has the number 0 inside of it. And to reflect that, I could change this to minus 50. Just as an example, 4, 5, and 6 and the total is minus 50. So nothing is actually changing. Because by default, parameters are what you call by val, all right, or by value. So what happens is when you pass a parameter, such as num1 and num2 and num3, up to here, you're not passing the variable. You are not passing this box. You are only passing the number. And Visual Basic will make a copy of that number and work with the copy only. Right, and the same with num2, num3, and total. So by default, they're always by val. However, what if we actually wanted to pass the variable? We want to pass the box with the number in it so we can play with it. And then when we come back to submain, it's changed. Well, in that case, it's by ref. So by ref goes on the left of the variable name. So if you ever wanted a by ref up here, it would be just next to the variable name like that. I don't want by ref here. You're actually best off having by val by default. All right, so I hope that makes sense. What I'm going to do is we're actually, just by adding that keyword there, by ref or by reference, we're not passing the number anymore. We're passing the whole variable intact. So any changes we make to it up in calculate average and total is actually going to return with us. So just by changing that keyword, if I press start, there it is. There's my by reference example. So by reference is really bloody handy if you want to pass more than one variable back or you want the original variable to be affected when you work on it inside another function or sub. All right, That's pretty much it for these ones. What I suggest is you pause the video, you have a play around with your parameters, your optionals, your by ref, your by vals. Okay. By the way, by val you could simply type in and it wouldn't change a bloody thing. And personally, I think by val looks quite ugly, so I just leave it off, to be completely honest. I just leave it as is. The next step to this is we're going to send a whole array of numbers 
and we're going to calculate the averages on them. So I'm going to scrap all this code. That's why I'm telling you to pause the video and have a go yourself because I'm about to scrap all this code and we're going to start with something extremely similar but very, very different and totally. So pause now and welcome back. Basically, I'm going to delete all of this stuff inside Calculate Average and Total and I'm going to get rid of these three parameters for the moment. What I'm going to do is replace it with one parameter which is an array called nums. Okay. So nums as a single. Now, to specify an array in a parameter, you don't specify the size of the array. You just have to specify it is an array. So to do that, you just put open and close brackets there. So you'll see that Visual Basic has just identified that as an array of single, floating point singles, or single floating points, I should say. All right. So our logic is completely changing. Because it's an array, because we can have a whole set of numbers now, we have no idea how many numbers there might actually be. By the way, don't worry about these errors down here. We'll get to them later. We have no idea how many numbers they're going to be. So we're going to use a for loop to go from, go through every single number that's inside that array. So we're going to go 4i equals 0 to nums dot length minus 1. Always remember the minus 1 when you're working with arrays, people, because it starts at 0. Okay, and what are we going to do inside here? Well, we're going to add up total. This one's quite easy. You go total plus equals nums i. So let's say there's 10 numbers inside my array. It's going to go from 0 to 9. It'll start at 0. It'll go add nums 0 to total. Then it'll come back over, add nums 1 to total, nums 2, all the way up to nums 9, and then it'll jump down here where we can return nums total divided by nums length, which is going to give us the average of that array. And that's it. That's the entirety of our function done. We now need to modify our sub main code, however, to reflect those changes. So pause the video if you want to keep typing that up, because I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to work on this guy. First thing is we need to change the logic behind us collecting numbers. Okay? So we're going to be collecting an infinite amount of numbers now, we're going to put them inside a list and we're going to send that list as an array to our calculate average and total. So first of all, how are we going to stop collecting numbers? Okay, please enter a number or minus one to stop. It's probably the easiest way to do that. Um, instead of calling it num1, I'm just going to call it num. All right. And let's set up a list of numbers. Dim nums as new list of single. Now keep in mind, people, that nums up down here is not the same as nums up here. A parameter and a variable are not shared, even if they have the same name. Just Well, if they're in different subs, I should say. Ugh, that was a bit awkward. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to repeat do loop until num equals minus 1. So that's when we're going to stop. Let's take this guy, jam inside that. Biggest problem is we need to actually declare num here. Alright, so loop, print this message, grab the number, we need to check if a number, whoop, num does not equal minus 1, then add it to the list. So you go nums.add num. So if a number does not equal minus 1, then add it to my list of numbers and loop until they type in minus 1. All right. Almost there, by the way, people. Now, calculate average in total. We pass it three numbers before. Let's get rid of that. And let's pass it nums. Now, nums is not an array of singles. It's, a list is actually not the same as an array of singles. So what we do is you put nums dot to array. And that'll send the whole list of numbers. So let's test this bad boy out. We can type in as many numbers as we want now. Ten minus one to stop. There it is. How easy is that? That's it. That's the entirety of this video, everybody. I hope you've learned a little bit of something about optional parameters by ref versus by val and passing arrays into parameters. So the next video, everybody, I'm going through coercion, which is a nice lead-on from this one. So thanks for watching, everybody. This is Nick Dingle signing off. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.